let's talk about how the reading test is scored. For every right answer, you're going to be awarded one raw point. If you get a question wrong or if you leave it blank, uh, you'll get zero points. So since there is no penalty or extra penalty for getting a question wrong, right? If you get it wrong or you leave it blank, you get no credit. Uh, this means guessing is definitely something you always want to do. So always guess. Let's write it like this. Always guess. So let's say you did run out of time and you had five questions left in 10 seconds. Then you're just going to make a guess, right? Do B, 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 or whatever, right? C, 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 or some random combination because there's no reason not to. If you leave it blank, you're going to get no credit. If you get it wrong, you get no credit. But if you get it right, you get a point. So you might as well guess. Now, our goal is to not have to guess, right? We want to make sure when we put down an answer that we're at least reasonably confident that it is the answer. But just keep this in mind, right? There's no reason not to be aggressive with guessing. If you're stuck between two and you just can't choose, you don't have any more reasons to pick one over the other, just guess. But our goal is to not have to guess. Our goal is to understand why the right answers are right and why the wrong answers are wrong. Once you've got your raw score, which is, of course, out of 52 because there's 52 questions, you're going to, well, the SAT people will take your raw score and they will kind of use it on a table like this to find what your scaled score is going to be for the reading test. So let's say you got 41 questions right. That would get you a raw score of 41. We look at this table. We see that a 41 corresponds to a 33 on the reading test. And if you see the max score you can get is a 40. Now, why is the max score a 40? Uh, well, the reading and the writing are combined actually into one section. So your score is reported uh, in the scaled score as one combination of the reading and the writing scores. So as you can see, the reading is out of 40. The writing is out of 40. So if you add those together, you'll get 80. And 80 times 10 is 800. So basically, the formula to figure out your score would be your reading score, your writing score. You add them up, you times it by 10, and that's going to give you your 200, 800 evidence-based reading and writing score. Right? So you're going to have a 200, 800 for the reading and writing. You're going to have a 200 and 800 for your math. And that's going to be a total of 400 to 1600 for the test overall. So let's just pretend you got a 41 on the reading. That would give you a 33. Let's say you got a 36 on the writing. That would bring you to a 33 as well. 33 plus 33 would be 66 times 10 would be 660, and that would be your final score. There's a bunch more stuff about subscores and, you know, this different breakdown to the scores. That's not super useful for us. I suppose when you're analyzing your score report, that might be helpful to help you figure out areas that you need to improve on. And perhaps colleges might use that in some way. It's still very up in the air. At the time of this video, uh, that I made this video, we haven't even had an administration of the real test yet. Uh, so hopefully by the end of 2016, or I should say, yeah, the summer of 2016 into the fall of 2016, we'll have a better idea maybe how colleges will use these scores. But really the most important scores to know are your, you know, your 200, 800 scaled score. That's going to be the thing that's going to be reported to colleges along with the math score. And really that's what you're going to be trying to shoot for above all.